Hello, Professor Woods. Today I'll be doing an art analysis for two art pieces that caught my attention at, from the Joy Museum's virtual tours. First artist that I would like to talk about is Amadeo Modigliani. He was most known for causing a disturbance in society with his nude portraits, but he also made regular portraits of people too. According to Joy Museums, he used to be a sculptor, but he switched over to painting because sculpting would worsen his medical condition at the time. Unfortunately, he was also famous for being the cause of a tragic event. Uh, Monigliani died at the age of 35 because tuberculosis had overtaken him. He got his lover pregnant and after his death, she couldn't bear it and ended up committing suicide. As an artist, his ideology was to challenge racial labels and the hegemony of European culture. One of the portraits that portray this is Adrian, a uh, woman with bangs. This portrait was part of Modigliani's series of unique portraits and created in 1917. Unlike your everyday regular portraits, uh, his portraits were very fascinating to look at because when he would work on the portraits, he would uh, draw features like the nose, face, and eyes out of proportion. In order to explain why he chose his art style, we need to dive deeper into history. So according to Artsy, in Paris uh, 1906, it was very anti-semantic and people would create uh, pseudo-scientific theories that classified facial features to construct and justify racial hierarchies like the racial sheets of Edward Drummond, which brutally verified Jews. In Adrian, we can see that Modigliani used warm colors for the hands, parts of her neck, face, and hair. His application of warm colors was excellent since it helped to bring out something human. This usage allows the audience to connect with the portrait. And according to Charlie Parker, uh, modern painters at the time seemed to be striving to remove those characteristics from their angular collisions of shapes and colors. At the time, many, many, at the time, many artists were producing similar works and naturally the more you see the same format over and over, uh, it tends to become boring. In terms of the lighting, the background is painted in very dark colors, that way the audience can focus their attention on Adrian herself. It's as if Adrian wants everyone to know she's here to stay no matter what happens. Which, and then this brings us to the overall message within the portrait. Uh, when we combine the historical context and Modigliani's art style, I believe his message to the world was to be proud of your identity. This message is very crucial in today's world because just like the Jewish people facing discrimination, Asians are currently facing heavy discrimination due to the COVID-19 pandemic. With ideas like yellow peril resurfacing and increased violence, various Asian groups have become scared to leave their homes to do their daily activities and such. By introducing this powerful message, it brings hope in people and encourages the, them to stand strong no matter what happens. The next artist I would like to present is Frederick Edwin Church. He is well known for his landscape paintings and was one of the best painters at Houston River School of American Painters. According to the website Frederick Edwin Church, uh, that's the name of the actual website, his Inspiration for paintings came from his trips around the world in places like South America, Europe, and the Middle East. An event that I found interesting in his life was his father's ownership of a paper mill. Uh, the reason being is because without the paper mill, we wouldn't see Edwin Church become a famous painter. He would probably be doing something else. With um, when it came to painting, many people consider him to be an interpreter of nature rather than a transcriber. In addition, whenever he was interviewed, he would never give away the meaning behind his paintings because he would want us to create our own interpretations of them. One painting that captures his ambiguousness was Aurora Borealis. The creation of Aurora Borealis came from Isaac Haynes' sketches during his trip to the Arctic. Uh, the painting was finished in 1863, and that was the time when the Union soldiers won the Battle of Gettysburg. And this is a very important date, and we will cover later why it is related to the creation of the painting. Uh, the first thing that caught my attention was the lighting. 
As we can see here, the auroral lights are expressed in blue, yellow, and red. And upon further investigation, I found that in an aurora, colors are supposed to be stacked on top of each other, and they're blended in with each other as well. Here in the painting, however, the colors are very distinct, and they form uh, the shape of an arc. Critics believe that the aurora lighting and the way it's presented it represents the American flag's somber recognition of the reality of post-war desolation. Since Church left us to interpret his piece, I think the lighting represents the hope in humanity to make things right. If we look closely, we can see a human and his dogs leaving the frozen ship. Uh, this frozen ship depicts the struggles of the Civil War, and a human uh, leaving the ship represents the North having the power to shape the future. So if we take into account the darkness encompassing the light, it could mean that the future of the United States is unknown, but if we are led into the right direction, there is a chance to redeem uh, the country for its mistakes. When it comes to the color palette, Church does an excellent job with it because it helps and complements the lighting effect brought by the Aurora Borealis. In order to get the light transitions on the ice, Church would use small touches of pigment built together through thin applications to ensure that the viewer would not notice the various paint strokes. A very interesting aspect is that even though the Aurora is lighting up the environment and the overall colors within the ice and the background, uh, they give off this very uh, dull look. Some art critics suggest that the coloration could represent a terrible place for those who have committed treachery, or a dark fate for the entire nation. If we combine all the elements described, so, uh, the lighting and the coloration, it paints a very straightforward message that even though the Civil War was filled with multiple casualties, uh, we as the human race need to come together to make sure that everyone who comes to America will have a bright future of some sort. Thank you.